Preston Wood families, I am so glad that you're joining us for this weekend's online worship experience. We are going to be taking a look at the life of Joseph. And in today's lesson, we are going to learn that when you think you're alone, you can trust that God is with you. There are many times throughout Joseph's story where he felt alone. But before we dive into today's lesson, let's stand up and worship together. Make sure you teach your parents those dance moves. I've got a reason to keep believing true Whatever comes my way Cause I put my hope and trust In the only one who's faithful every day In the darkest night, you are by my side I'm never alone because I know to see the pictures and videos your parents post of you worshiping. Make sure you tag us. So today, we are going to dive into our Bible lesson. We're going to look at what Joseph's brothers did to him. Turn your Bibles to Genesis 37 as we take a look at how Joseph had to trust God. And day one of my four day trek at the Washita National Forest is coming to a close. And I've set up camp and I am ready for. Wait, why am I whispering? Ugh. Haley, I've been on longer hikes than this one before, but this is actually my very first overnighter ever. And I've gotta say, it's actually pretty nice. I mean, it's just a chance to gather my thoughts and just be me. So, since I'm kind of an expert now, I figured I'd give you some tips for when you wanna go hiking solo. Number one know your gear. Make sure you know how to use all your camping gear before you get to camp. The last thing you want is to be stuck in the middle of the woods when you can't figure out how to set up your tent. Number two, don't keep your plans to yourself. Make sure to tell your family and friends where you're gonna be at all times. A simple note or a phone call will let people know you're okay and they'll know how to find you in case of an emergency. Number three, trust your training. You've read all the guidebooks, You've done your research and you've probably been camping with others at least a few times. So trust what you've learned and you'll do fine. In the end, that's what it all boils down to, trust. Trust is putting your confidence in someone you can depend on, even if that someone is yourself. All right, that's all I've got for tonight. See you in the morning. <gasps> okay, so it's the middle of the night and I, I hear something moving outside of my tent. Did you hear that? Maybe it's just my mind playing tricks on me. <gasps> I feel so alone right now. 
In today's Bible story, we'll hear about a guy named Joseph. And even though he had 11 brothers, he knew all about feeling alone. Oh. Tip number four about camping solo. Don't do it. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Genesis, chapters 37 and 39. The Bible, it's God's one big story the epic adventure of how He created us and how He loves us so much He made a way to rescue us even when we turned our backs on Him. And as we travel through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who actually met God and found their lives changed forever. God had promised to grow Abraham's family into a great nation. Abraham's son Isaac and his grandson Jacob had made many mistakes, but God was still faithful and gave them many children. Jacob alone had more than a dozen. I have the finest sons in all of Canaan. Jacob's next to youngest son, Joseph, spoke up. Uh, about that, Dad? Dan and Asher let a bear steal three sheep because they were too busy setting up a locust race. Joseph's older brothers glared at him. Tattletale! Is this true? Yeah, they're not very good at racing locusts <laughs> or watching sheep. Joseph's brothers all knew that he was the favorite. In fact, Jacob had given him this beautiful coat woven with many colors, and uh, telling the truth didn't make him any more popular with his brothers either. Soon after, Joseph joined Reuben, Dan, and Simeon, and the rest of the brothers out in the fields. Hey, anybody want to hear my dream? No. Okay, so we were all tying up bundles of grain, right? And then all of your bundles of grain bowed down to mine. Oh yeah, like that would ever happen. Just telling you what I saw. Reuben pulled Jacob aside. If you have any more dreams, little brother, keep them to yourself. A short while later, Joseph did have another dream, but this time, he didn't keep it to himself. There were 11 stars, that's you guys, bowing down to me. Joseph, you're not doing yourself any favors here. But Joseph was so fascinated by his dreams, he couldn't stop talking. Sometime later, he even told his father. The moon and sun were bowing down to me too. Joseph, my boy, you're a fine young man, but don't get big ideas. You really think your mother and I would bow down to you? I'm, I'm just telling you. I have an errand for you. Your brothers are caring for the flocks near Shechem now. Go see how everything's going, then come back and tell me. Okay, sure, Dad. So Joseph brushed off the sleeves of his beautiful coat and set off for Shechem. When he arrived, his brothers were nowhere to be found. A local man pointed him in the right direction. Well, they up and left, bless your heart, you're going to Dothan, I heard him say. So Joseph set out once more across the wide, empty plains, and as he neared Dothan, he could see his brothers and their flocks off in the distance. His brothers could see him approaching too. Oh, you're kidding me, is that who I think that is? Dream boy himself. This. <laughs> now this is an interesting situation. Huh? We're in the middle of nowhere. We could send Joe to uh, sleep with the fishes. And no one would ever know. I don't like seafood. I mean, bump him off. Put him on ice. Judah jumped in too. Then we dump him in an empty well, nice and easy. Their eldest brother, Reuben, heard these plans. You can't kill him, but if you want to mess with him, okay. Just put him down in this empty well. Reuben couldn't stomach what his brothers were about to do, so he went to go search for a, uh, a sheep that had strayed. Yeah. They'll get bored of this. I can sneak Joseph out later and get him home. The other brothers watched with glee as Joseph arrived. Hey, uh, dream boy. Yeah, <laughs> things are about to get a little less dreamy for you. <laughs> the brothers circled Joseph, tugging off his coat. Hey. What are you doing? Dad says... Simeon and Dan grabbed Joseph by one arm. Dad's not here. And he's definitely not down there. Before Joseph even had time to think, his brothers had dropped him down into a dry well. 
You can't do this! It's dark down here! Brilliant observation, Sherlock. The brothers ignored Joseph's cries and sat down to dinner. You have to get me out sometime. Ugh, I am so over that whining. Look! Dudes! Traitors! A caravan of camels loaded with spices trekked right up to the brothers' camp. Judah furrowed his brow. Joseph's no good to us if we hurt him. We gain nothing. But if we sell him, we can get some cash money! The brothers carried out their terrible plan. They pulled Joseph from the well and sold him to the traders for silver coins. This is not fair. <laughs> bye bye, dream boy. Hope you like Egypt. Later, Reuben returned to check the well, planning to sneak Joseph out, but it was empty. He's gone. What am I supposed to do now? Calm down. He's not dead. But what do I tell our father? Judah held up Joseph's brightly colored coat. We do have this. Ah, yes. <laughs> I see a tragic story unfolding right now. The brothers took Joseph's coat and dipped it into the blood of a goat. And then they took it to their father. So, uh, Dad, uh, we found this. Does it belong to Joseph? That's his robe. Jacob examined the bloodstains in horror. A wild animal must have attacked him. He, he's dead. My son is dead. I, I will mourn him until I die. The brothers exchanged glances. No one, not even Reuben, spoke up with the truth that their brother was still alive. In fact, Joseph had been taken to Egypt and sold to a man named Potiphar, who was the captain of the Pharaoh's guard. I, um, I'm new here. I, uh, I don't know how to, uh, walk like an Egyptian. Then you'd better learn. Even though Joseph was now a slave in a foreign land, God was still with him. And over the next few years, God gave Joseph success in everything he did. Listen, we all know what it feels like to be alone. Maybe you've gotten lost in a store before. Or some people feel alone when the lights go out at night. Some people even feel alone when they're surrounded by people they don't know. Feeling alone can be uncomfortable, even scary. <gasps> Think of Joseph. Joseph was betrayed by his own brothers, thrown into a dark well, and sold as a slave to Egypt. He must have felt all alone. But during all of that, the writer of Genesis wrote, the Lord was with Joseph. God was with Joseph at home. He was with Joseph in the well, and he was with Joseph in Egypt. And here's something you may not realize. God is with you too. But if you're anything like me, you may have to remind yourself that God is with you. And there's something we can do. It's the same something that Jesus did. A lot of the times when Jesus felt alone, he prayed. When he felt sad and exhausted, Jesus prayed. Or when he just wanted to spend time with God, he prayed. So, hold please. Okay, I prayed. I'm still in the woods. I still can't sleep, and there's still strange noises outside of my tent. But somehow I don't feel as alone anymore. Talking to God helps remind me that he's always with me. I'm gonna ignore that. <laughs> so, the one thing to remember today is this. When you think you're alone, you can trust God is with you. But if you don't remember, tip number one, pray. Tip number two, pray. And tip number three, pray. And if you do that, maybe being alone won't be so scary. Okay, I'm gonna try and get some sleep now. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Or, or on second thought, maybe I'll just stay up and pray. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Bye. That was amazing. No matter where Joseph was, if he was in the pit where his brothers had thrown him, or if he was traveling or in Potiphar's home, Joseph may have felt alone but God was with him. Have you ever felt like you were alone? Sometimes being alone is fun, like when I'm all by myself and I can watch Frozen 2 all I want. But then there's other times that being alone can be lonely. And sometimes you could be with a whole group of people and still feel alone, and that stinks. But we want you to remember that when you think you're alone, you can trust that God is with you. Joseph really felt alone, but God was with him. Isn't it amazing to know that no matter where we are and no matter what we are going through, we are never alone. God is with us. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So when you feel alone or you think that no one is on your side, 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and know that without a doubt that you can trust that God is with you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Be sure to keep checking all of our social media accounts for resources and fun things to do and for more awesome worship experiences. Have an awesome week and we'll see you next time.